Hello and welcome into the SoRare Data Football Strategy Show. I am Andrew Laird. You can find me as Lairdino on SoRare. Joined as always by Sean Newsham, PSU fans too. Today to talk about some volatile players and where to play them. We already had some people in the chat trying to throw, throw some comments in. You wanted me to point out ZM Star's first super early comment. Here for the hero we all want and need, need and want, PSU fans too. Yeah, I mean, very, very valid. There's actually some pretty good comments early. I actually think that ZM Star posted that like three hours ago, by the way. Yeah, no, I'm glad we at least figured out your burner right away instead of yeah, having a week later in the definitely. show. Um, but Mike Baston actually has a good comment. I think that'll be a good uh, segment to go into today as well. And he talks about uh, volatile, so rare managers. And we actually have one of those in chat. I see Tuggy is out there. Uh, and so we'll we'll talk about uh, so rare managers as well. Because I actually think that's a pretty good topic and pretty good relation to what we're talking about. We are going to get it. At some point, every, everybody has asked us who we should... Uh... Yeah, we should be naming names more often than we do. So maybe we'll do that. Anyway, thank you to everybody for joining us. Raul, hello, you are also in. Maxime is here to tell us that the stream is already over because he solved everything. Although I don't think that was actually the topic we were going to discuss with every division. I mean, 50% bonus for captain, which personally I would hate. Um, Tuggy, hello. Mike Baston's here. SR Monkey, Sorahound. Hey, everyone. Uh, Ricky's here. Chani, hello. Marcus, Pablo. Look at this, all these people. This is great. Matt, Misaki, Dream Oblivion, Crypto, Breco. What happened to PSU fans one? I don't know. You know, I just, I, I, I've had so many people ask me that over the, over the years. Like, why is it pluralized also? Like, why is it pluralized? And I, I don't have an answer for that. The reason for two is two is my favorite number. Okay. But so that's that's my reason for for two. So actually, funny story is uh, my AIM. So we'll go back to, to the olden days. My AIM was not PSU fans too, and I don't even know how it came how I came up with the numbers. But my my AIM handle was PSU eleven eighteen. So PSU one 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 eight. But I don't know why I didn't use that for everything else going forward after that, or why that was the numbers that I selected right at the time. Yeah. It, was, it, was a, it was a weird decision. Hmm. Yeah. Two, I got to say on that two are my favorite numbers, though. That's why that's where the twos come from. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, let me just finish everyone. Rui, hello, Quinny. What is up? And uh, Yelle's here, Levi's, Matt, Fabian, Tevin. Wow. Ooh, Maxime thrown in. Maybe because you never get first, even though Sean's got plenty of firsts because every time he's in first, I get a DM about it. Um, so uh, Colonel Dickweed, aim was class. Agreed. I actually can't remember the last time I've heard somebody actually called AIM instead of just aim. AIM. Well, that's, I mean, it was my older generation that probably- I mean, yeah, you're old. Like yeah. you, you right. use MySpace and stuff, I'm sure. I was actually never on MySpace, but I will say that the first like internet- provider or like uh yeah provider i used was prodigy which i'm sure is way older than most of you people uh anyway tattoos so rare what's up uh apologies for the slight delay in the start today i was watching nellis's latest video the napoli video it's awesome those the vlogs that he's doing thanks to to so rare are great and alex does like such a good job editing them so if anybody hasn't checked those out they're over on the john nellis youtube channel really entertaining watch um, what are we talking about today? Again? Volatile players for SO5 scores. So I came up with this topic like last night and I sent it to Sean. We have not discussed any of it, but part of it was because of some, my own players that I use where I'm like, oh, this guy would be good here, but not here. And I thought it was worth discussing. Sean, when I showed you the topic, um, were there any like specific players that like immediately came to your head? Of like, no. oh, this guy is really volatile, and I would never. I mean, honestly, him. you posted the topic, and I just was didn't even look at it to be completely honest. I'm like, sounds good. So now that you've had some time to think, that now that we've been on for four minutes and forty five seconds, are there any players that jump out at you? I've actually thought more about the users that are volatile. <laughs> I, I mean, so Mike Baston got me got me rolling down that, and we definitely have some names on that that front. Like, I can definitely think of some people. I mean, if. It's our show. If you want to start naming names, just go nuts. Oh, I mean, we so we we like we'll start with our good friend Tuggy. Tuggy, this is literally Tuggy's cycle. He buys a card he has no reason buying because that's what he does. 
usually the guy's really hot and is super peaky in terms of his scores. Well, let me let me rephrase this. Let me rephrase that. He trades for yeah. I have no issue naming Tuggy. Like I, I retired actually from the Tuggy support group this weekend. I was just so over it. I told Gator guy, I'm like, I just I just can't do it anymore. Tuggy is just too dumb to help. I, so I'm like, I, I have to retire and I'll just laugh at him from from the, the sidelines. Uh, actually, so Ron Romero did come up with the one name that I was thinking. That's Maxi Wittick, uh, which we'll talk about more there. But yeah, so, so this is the Tuggy cycle. He trades and loses 30% value to get a car he has no business getting because that's what he does. Um, Tuggy, Tuggy is like, he's an always appearing presence Chani, because he always does something that's just so dumb that it like deserves talked about into the next conversation and it gets brought up a lot so anyways back to his cycle he trades loses 30 percent to bring in a card that he never should bring in that's like on a massive heater that person then sucks two games in a row and he then trades them at a 30 percent loss for another per- player at a 30 percent uh pay up then that person sucks and then does it again. Or he buys backup goalies. So yesterday, I don't know if you saw. So he was like, I'm not going to do anything dumb while you're on retirement. Literally yesterday, he... So like three weeks ago, he traded for Paulinho from Minero because it's a card he has no reason having. And then he obviously didn't score or something. So Tuggy now thinks he sucks. So he has to trade him for Basson from... Walwick, who then just so happens to get benched three hours later. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, this is just the gift that keeps on giving. I will say that I'm you, fine. you, yeah. your like enjoyment of so rare is greater because of Tuggy. I don't know. Like, look that. at you. You have this shit eating grin every time you talk about Tuggy. And I think it's you just really enjoy that he's able to play a game in a way that's entertaining for him and it entertains you. Yeah. So I don't know about that. I think I think my sober enjoyment would be better if Tuggy just didn't exist or I didn't know Tuggy existed, but we can't really go back in time and and do that. No. Tuggy's it's... convinced that Vassin's gonna be the FC twenty goalkeeper to replace Unterstall next year. Is yeah. Hmm. And Rashford brings up the Gill, Tuggy, Bashing, and just spend more ETH are the three pillars of our show. It's pretty reasonable on, on all accounts. I can't. It's very tough to argue, to be honest. Yeah. There are hundreds other, of hours of film that show that. But other... All right, so who, the, I'm, I'll, I'll tee it up for you. Who's the one manager you think of immediately when it's uh, in regards to a volatile manager? Tony Watt. Tony Watt. Tony Watt changes his strategy four times a week. I have, so, I have so many DMs by like by the time I like respond to my DM from Tony, he's like three strategies past that one. The and best like, the best you? today was that I saw a tweet from him to somebody else telling <laughs> telling them to be patient. That yeah. Was- that's that is literally yeah, t- he's just very, very volatile. Um, it's Haber, incredibly volatile, changes strategy all the time. I don't um, know if he really changes it, if he actually changes it as much as like he talks about changing it. Haber, that is. He He's a lot better with that in the last few months. He yeah. used to do it a lot more, and then he like sort of like mm-hmm. relaxed a little bit with it, but he bought some cards that like made make sense not to do that as much, but you put a, you put a couple of good bad games together and Haber's ready to sell everything. I mean, we all feel that way at some point, maybe not you. I, I think that uh, simply Alex is very volatile recently. He's like, I don't know. He's now talking about uniques. I did. you see he's talking about getting uniques and moving up to the unique threshold level? Um. I did not. It feels aggressive. Yeah, he was talking about that on Twitter. I think I saw it. John Nellis is also very, very volatile, but I feel like he's very volatile because of content. Yeah, he's not even really that volatile. Like, he doesn't actually make that many moves. Like, he doesn't trade that much. He doesn't buy that a ton of cards anymore. Well, he does some stuff that's... 
that's uh, out there. I would say Chani is actually somewhat volatile, but he's not been as much recently, I feel like. I think this is the key, is that they, they buy the same different players for the same strategy. That's so I, I wouldn't really call that volatile. But That's fair. I mean, no one touches Tony Watt. Tony Watt is in a different, like, he literally goes from, like, building out, like, an Asia rare lineup to, like, building out a challenger unique lineup and then to an America rare pro lineup in, like, 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, I think he it's pretty much, like, as if he's at a buffet and he doesn't know what he wants to eat. So he's just going to like try this and then he doesn't like love that. So he's going to try something else and he's yep. just still feeling everything out. That's all. I mean, Hey, I love going to buffets. I love a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know, That's I don't awesome. get, you don't get fat without doing that. Like yeah. uh. <laughs> anyway, but what I want to talk about players because I feel like, I feel like the rare pro narrative has changed a little bit. And you either need to tell me that I that I'm wrong on it and that I'm not actually seeing it correctly, or or I just misunderstood the entire time. But I felt feel like previously the rare pro conversation was that like you should get the three elite rares and then two super rares that should play well and can match some of the bigger super rares with the extra bonus. But now it feels like we're moving to like the yeah, you need three like really good rares and two really good super rares. And so now we just need a bunch of really good players. And given that not everyone can afford like the, the better cards, you tend to push yourself in a way of like, well, if I get the guy who can score 70, but also will score 15, then that guy isn't quite as uh, valuable. And so I kind of wanted to see where you went, like if rare pro or captor, like where these guys are that are like so good some days and just like so bad in others. Um, I'm currently enjoying what did I tell you was going to happen today to me that I told you, you was going to happen? Did you get opted down somewhere? Little 15 point negative correction to Melly, you know, no big deal. So yeah. that only cost me first uh, to fifth in U23 Rare Pro. That's yeah, super cool. Super cool. Um, yeah, love that. Um, it, I, I don't know. Like, I think the idea was always that you needed good players. Um, in rare pro both super rares and rares like i said like i used i'll use weird players like in rare pro and u23 rare pro this week i use melly muhlenstein like people aren't using melly muhlenstein in u23 rare pro like it's just about having good good players that make sense and uh can can function on a given week per se so like i don't know if it's necessarily that it's but yeah you like you need good lines i i think a lot more people have moved prioritization to super rare i actually have a hot take laird that i think you may agree with but i think it's going to be a pretty hot take so i think the absolute worst spot right now to prioritize and let me rephrase this i think that prioritizing to like get this is still important but what people are doing is probably not great the worst place right now to prioritize things is cap 240. So many people are like running elite level cards in cap 240 and all, all scarcities. And it's really, really uh, difficult to actually get a high end card. So like realistically, in my opinion, what cap 240 is right now is you are trying to hit 250 points. So like, I don't really want to hit 325 points in cap 240 because I probably am going to get a pretty mediocre card in that situation. Whereas like if I have a guy that puts up like 95 points, I don't want them in cap 240. I want them in another contest where I have a chance of getting a better card. Um, so I, I think that that's kind of a interesting uh, part of the equation, but like people are running like really good cards in cap 240. And I just don't know if it's the right thing to do. Like, so for example, like I'm in, I, it just so happened that these guys just popped off this week. So my cap 240 this week, I have sent Sven Mijnans, who is, is a Chani favorite, and he ripped a hundo. And then I have Silvestri from Udinese, who ripped 80. Like, that was the first time Silvestri was over, like, 40 in, like, two months or something. But anyways, like, I would much rather have those cards been elsewhere instead of in this situation. Um so it, it, because like if I I have that and I have 345 points in cap 240, which if like I had XP, that's like what 500 points. 
ish 450 500 points so like if i run that in like gas i'm getting a much better card and i'm getting some eth out of it that it's just a much better situation um and not saying that it's bad but like i'm gonna get at best a tier three super rare, maybe a tier four super rare that just isn't really worth that much so it's like a situation where like yeah i mean I'm, i'd rather these guys pop off than not pop off but it's you you can't win a good card there there's literally no chance of winning a tier zero or even a tier one in cap 240 super rare. so like i'm not really trying to win the best cards there i'm trying to get 250 like i'm really trying to hit like 250 so i get the threshold i'm really not trying to hit like 350 points because if i hit 350 points i'd much rather those cards be used in like all-star rare pro or all-star super rare or somewhere else it is sort of my my point so like i feel like people are prioritizing and playing elite level cards there when really they should just be prioritizing trying to hit the threshold is kind of my thought what do you think i think you're making that up like i don't think anybody's up. actually putting elite level cards People are like playing. People are getting. You you played Marquinhos. I mean, I think most people wouldn't have played Marquinhos. Then. People are playing their best cards there. So like, you can take out marquee level if it's like. I'm not saying like people are playing like Carlos Gill there, but people are playing like their strongest cards there, possibly. Yeah, I'll. I'm gonna. I'm gonna disagree with you only because I think you're coming from the point. You're coming from the opinion or the, not opinion, the realization that you have like tons of super rares. And if you only have, like most people don't have five super rares that can allow them to get a card in all-star super rare. So they're going to cap 240 so that they can get the threshold. And if their cards pop off, that's great. But like, I think there's a big difference between having like one or two really good super rares and playing those in cap 240 versus five. And most people just don't have five. And so if you, if you don't have five to get an all-star super rare, you're not competing enough and you're not winning ETH. So you may as well play them where you can at least win something. I don't know. I feel like I've seen lineups and, and there's just cards that maybe are quite good and people could be using them in other lineups that they're using in this situation instead. So I... Both rare level. It doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not even talking about just super rare level. I'm talking about like rare level and limited level as well. Yeah. No, I, I think it's much more that they... Maybe they have one or two really good ones and the other three are terrible. And it's like, we well, just have to run them. Because that's that's where you play it. Like I don't think anyone's realistically building a lineup that could compete for a card in All Star or any regional super rare competition, and just being like, oh, I'll play that two forty. Like I think they're playing two forty because they those are the the cards they can play in two forty. Yeah, possibly. I mean, part of that's true to some extent like people are playing what they have to play and like what they can play like you can't just run out there and run like Bobby gill neymar etc like you have to have some people that are a little bit a little bit lower down the, the list but like definitely some cards that are quite good that end up in that competition sure but it's like if i had one really good super rare and a bunch of like middling ones i would probably try to play that one because it at least gives me gets me in my mind a better chance of hitting the threshold, whereas I probably are not able to compete in All Star or or any. Well, you could compete in All Star Rare Pro. Like, why wouldn't you use an All Star Rare Pro? That's oh, I was only considering Super Rare. Yeah, I guess you could, because I can't get ETH there. Talking about in every competition, like as an overall, like I I I, I don't really count in this. Con that anyone with a big gallery is like you're gonna have good cards that go in these competitions right like they're just you have leftovers that that go there um but like other people that don't have as big of a uh gallery like like you have like this week you're gonna tell me the castro montez is there but like you probably play castro montez there because he was uh a rotational risk due to the midweek right uh no i thought he'd play because i they needed to win that game oh so like yeah so like you're playing some of your better cards there but i mean i guess for you like i don't know your priority like in, in all-star rare pro you're like for example all-star rare right now all-star rare is a good spot to to sort of prioritize a little bit more because you can get some eth out of it if you have really good stuff but like you have you have vonikin in your all-star rare life like to me vonikin's like was one of the best plays on the on the week because Ubin's just terrible. They're so bad. Yeah, I played. I chose Gill over 
of Vanekin. That's why. I mean, I respect that. I respect that move. Um, but like you use like kind of one player players. that you'd be able to like be, be, be like oh all right <laughs> no but like, I mean like you had Mally Mule and something. to me he was like one of the best defenders period on the weekend and you use him in your cap two forty rare so like you're using high level cards in that competition that you could have used elsewhere um, oh your cap two seventy is pretty good until Coates doesn't play today yeah that'll be fun. Um, but yeah, so anyways, just just sort of like looking at it, like that's just sort of an observation I, I've made with with different people and different things. I think it's most likely one of those situations where they just don't have enough. And it's like, well, True. if I have one good super rare, maybe you don't even have the great rares to like pair with it in Rare Pro, then you just make sure you get the ETH. Like cap two forty super rare is like the first lineup I make it. Well, it's the second lineup I make every week just to make sure I get the ETH, and I crashed and burned this game week. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand that to some extent. I, I've just seen other people like doing it to to some extent, and I'm just sort of not sure if that's the best spot to be putting higher end cards that could be used elsewhere on a week. Like I still, I'm, it's a tricky situation because I'm not saying don't prioritize it and like just throw in junk and, and not get it. Like hitting the ETH is really important right now. Like it's a, it's a great thing and you want to hit it. I'm just saying I don't think the goal is to get um is to get like 350. You're you're trying to hit like 250 so you get threshold and and you just get over the line. That's like what you're trying to do with it. No, I I totally agree with that. Like I the the as somebody who actually was that 220? I don't remember where I won that Madsen card. Was it 240? I don't know. Whatever. But there at no point do I do I make a 240 lineup and think, how do I win? I just want to win. I just need to get to 240 or 250, excuse me. Mike Bastin said that he is a practitioner of the black approach. Is that just run five Fred Emmings out there? I don't like, know what Andy's. You know, what what's the Andy Black approach, Mike Bassin? I'm I'm assuming it, he's just saying that like you just run Fred Emmings in every spot and you call it a day. So Josh XL asked this question: If your best lineup for the week fits in Cap 240, where would you play it? So I think it's really only half the question because, like, if your best lineup can score 270, then you should probably play it in Cap 240. But if your best lineup can score 450, you probably shouldn't play it in cap 240. It's like kind of one of those. It's less about whether what your best lineup is and how that lineup compares to the likely points that you need to win rewards in wherever it can it can go. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely think that that is um, viable. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, there was an announcement by Sower. They are unveiling a marketplace update with card list groupings. Bundles? I don't know. I don't really understand it. Great. Yeah. Checks Single, out. I, I don't. Maybe, Metal Gear maybe. says if you're a smaller gallery, you put your best or almost best cards in Cap 240 Super Rare so you can grind the ETH for cards. I would say if you have a small gallery, you shouldn't be playing Cap 240 Super Rare. Hmm. I think it's a, Cap 240 Super is a decent spot. Like it depends how much you're using, you know, how much how much of your resources you've used to get those super rares, but like I don't know. And maybe he's just looking at it as a smaller in terms of total cards instead of gallery value. But yeah, I mean I I if you have if you have a line that really makes sense in Cap 240, I think it's fine playing there. Yeah, yeah. Surface said cap 240 is tough to play for prizes versus threshold because you need to play more volatile high ceiling guys to have a chance at a good card, which is kind I mean, of the that counterpoint to that. You just can't win a good card. So just period. Yeah, just period. I mean Johnny I think, also is, is in the uh he doesn't understand this update at all. I, I, I think there are enough people who would be perfectly content entering a competition where like the top prize were super rares of like, I mean, I'm looking at the tier two super rare prize. Now, granted, only two people get it. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. two. But they're decent for, if you're somebody who doesn't have cards to like win all-star, 
I think if you enter a competition where the top prizes are super rares of like Trippier, yeah, yeah. Arrow, Vela, like that's pretty good. Benzema. Oh, yeah. if or you if you're get... me, you just go all the way to the bottom and that's what you win. Correct. I mean, well, yeah, there's only two, so you're likely not going to get a top end card. But like at least the idea that you could win like a Trippier, a Sebastian mm -hmm. Via card, like those are good cards. Like I, yeah. I, I'm just sort of busting the balls. Like the, the tier twos are good. Like when you get down to tier threes, like obviously it's a little bit less appealing. Um, there's still some good cards in there. Though. Yeah, there are. There's, there's surprised there's to see goalies cards. in here, to be honest. I'm just saying it's it's hard to prioritize something. It's hard to prioritize a lineup or a a card into something where you cannot win the best card. Any situation in which you cannot win the best card is hard to fully go after that. Typically, would you agree with that? Say that again. I say it's hard to prioritize a competition in general where you just cannot win the best highest level cards. So I, I think it, I think that's right. If you have, if you have the cards to compete for the best cards, like not everyone yeah. has, the, has the best super rares to compete for all-star super rare. And so, or which is not even the best super rares, but you don't have to, you have to go to unique for that or, like if you don't have the best rares, then it's tough to win all-star rare. And so if you can just get that ETH, I think it's okay. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Like I that's why I said it, it was a it was a fine line that I was that I was trying to to discuss. Because you're not trying, like you still want the ETH. The ETH is the most important part of the game right now. So you currently are trying to hit the ETH in any ways that you possibly can hit it. So it's, it's a fine line that I'm trying to toe here between when I'm saying, like, don't prioritize it. I'm just saying, like, I don't want to throw out a elite level lineup per se there because I think there's better uses for it else, elsewhere. Yeah, I, I think that's right. I think if if you if somehow a lineup that fits under a 240 point cap is like could legitimately compete elsewhere, then I think elsewhere is probably worth going after. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to catch up on the comments here in the chat about this new market update or this new, whatever it's called, card grouping. Has anybody figured it out yet? They said it's going to solve all our problems. I'll let you sit here and give your opinion on it. It's, I don't fully understand it without like being able to sit down and read it right now. The new view groups listings for cards of the same player in scarcity in a single stack display. The least expensive card is located on top of the stack and all groupings are arranged from least to most expensive. So basically it's just going to look like, are there just three cards showing on the, on the market now? It's just a, Find out, Sean. Yeah, you you show us you show us the way here, Larry. Boy. Manager sales. Okay, so they're just going to show okay. one messy limited, and then show me that there are ten. Okay, limited. that's a good update. Like that's that's a good update. Like that clutters things a lot less. Yeah. Like that's like a it. that's a positive improvement. I think. I think that's great. Yeah. I also absolutely never look for cards on so rare. So I also do not look, for cards <laughs> but I think that that is a good update. The issue is that I feel like that's just gonna you want to be the first card. So like, like the whole idea of getting to the floor is still important here. Yeah, it just it makes it easier to make sure that you're the lowest. Yeah, to, and it really the... hurts. Like it really hurts if you're trying to have like a jersey mint of something, or you're trying to sell a jersey mint. Because Ooh, good point. You're never like assuming you're never gonna list a jersey man or a one of one hundred or something at floor, you're never gonna see it. Like someone's never gonna see that it's up for sale. Yeah, the fact that it I mean you pretty much have to click through for if you want to see the higher XP cards too. Josh said if only they launched that alongside list or play, no one would have complained. I do not believe that that is true. I think that the complaints for list or play would have still been pretty tremendous. Oh, and they automatically, they default to latest season too. So that actually oh, so it shows like the kill people who are trying to sell older cards. That's that's pretty shitty. Okay, you just took away some of the, the positives here. Like this 
messy floor is actually higher XP than the others. Although yeah, that's like that's XP. a bad look is to it? me. Yeah, this is a nine. Yeah, that's. Hmm. Yeah, I mean that's that's not a great look to me that it's defaulted to the latest season first. Yeah, Surface said you can switch it off. I appreciate that you can switch it off. Yeah, I just but, that's, I feel like it shouldn't be defaulted on. Yeah, agreed. Hmm. Yeah, Chani just said it needs to be off on default, not the other way around. I agree with that. Yeah. Sorry for those who are trying to sell Mbappe from last season. Uh, yeah, I think it's... Oh, and they do it by popular player, whatever that means. That's fun. But I'm kind of like Blue Tomatoes. I don't use this page anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, I couldn't tell you the last time I was on that page, Blue Tomatoes. Um, so, I mean, that's fair. But I, I'm not, I do think that some people, uh, I, I think it's a positive overall for some people. But Sora Holder or Sora Holland says that this is a, another useless update. I'm not going to say this is a useless one. This is a better one than, than last week's update. Yeah, guys, I'm going to agree with that. I don't think it's have, useless at all. Did you guys have uh, fun on the list for play topic on uh, the end of the week with Andy? Uh, what's funny is that by the end, or actually maybe by the next day, I already like didn't care. I was just like, okay, that's just what it is. I, I didn't care literally immediately. I just thought it was stupid. Yeah. I, uh... I don't think the negative is like that negative is sort of where my thought process is. Yeah. I don't see any reason for... For this to be considered like a bad update this one or the lister play this one yeah i, I, this seems that, fine to me. I think it's weirdly implemented yeah I, I wish for i mean so when i sold all my limited cards most of them were like old season ones yeah and if i was going to try to individually sell them all i would be furious if the last latest season was automatically yeah chosen and my like, cards that's... didn't show up that's really unfortunate if you have an old season card. Right. Like, like imagine like at the beginning of the season, right? Where there's like one new season card, whatever you list as the floor is going to show up. Right. Yeah. Uh, Nep was saying I was under the assumption we were to instantly hate on everything new without cause. No, we do hate this. We hate this latest season button. Don't worry. Don't yeah, worry. We definitely don't love it. Haber, Haber said he quite likes Lister play because he can barely sell cards. Yeah, but like why? Yeah, but like there's not, I, I don't know. You and I talk, the Lister play to me, I mean, do we want to talk about Lister play or no, since you guys talked about it Friday? Uh, it, there's always more to say, Sean. There's always more to say. So the Lister play to me is just really stupid because like you just don't list, like, People are like, well, then I can't have my so-and-so card listed for 10 ETH. Well, you having that card listed for 10 ETH didn't matter anyways. Like, there's literally no point in that card being listed for 10 ETH anyways. Um, but, like, it just isn't... Uh, in my opinion, the goal that they had set out for the list or play idea is to keep the market from being flooded from cards. The issue is... I don't think that it keeps the market from being flooded for cards because um, you still are going to have people just jam the list in. The issue is, is that like now instead of there just being like 20 messies on the platform all seven days of the week and people just like sort of leaving them up there now on like Tuesday, if they don't have a midweek game, every messy card that people want to sell is going to be up there and there's going to be a massive rush to the floor because people know they have to sell it immediately or they can't leave it up for the weekend because they have to play. So I just don't really think that there's that much of an incentive with that. And then also like, I just think that people will list their cards during the midweek, not list them during the weekends. And it just doesn't really do much. All it does is sort of just adds a nuisance of like, let's say you list Messi on Tuesday, then you have to go on Thursday, pull him back down, then put him back up next Tuesday, like whatever you do. And it's just like, I don't know. I just don't think that there is not uh, not tons to go with it. Flink Flong just talked about this as well. He's like, so much for jersey number, special editions, XP, et cetera. I totally agree. Yeah. Um, 
It's just, I think the idea behind this was was actually, sorry, so the idea behind the list or play was good. Their idea was we don't want there to be a rush to the floor on the market, which is a good intention. I just don't think there was any actual merit to what they did having an impact on that. Now, this idea, I think, is also good because the idea here is to, like, declutter the, um, to declutter the, 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 whatever we're calling the secondary market here. So I think that there's some merit to both of these being good ideas. I just don't know if the implementation was great on either of them. Yeah. Um, Mike Bassin commented that if you click off the latest season, it'll stay that way. But the fact that it defaults to everybody. Right. So... A lot of people are directly or indirectly really lazy. And so if they see like, there are going to be people who in six weeks go to sell a card and they're like, wait, why isn't my card showing up? And someone will be like, well, it's a last season card. You have to unselect that latest season. They'd be like, oh, I never noticed it. And it's like, well, it's been there the entire time. And they were like, yeah, I just, I don't, I didn't look for it. And like, it's things like that which is why the default is really important. But also with this list or play thing, you're like, everyone talks about how it's probably going to reduce the number of cards on the secondary market, which theoretically supply goes down, demand stays the same, card value should go up. And they were like, well, everyone's just going to post their cards on Tuesday. But there are plenty of people who are like, oh, I have to, I'm going to put my card on the market. And they're like, oh, wait, I'm playing it. So I can't. And when Tuesday comes around, they just forget and the card doesn't go on the market. And like, yeah, it will absolutely reduce sure. the number of cards on the secondary market. Sure. Jacoon said list or play is great because it cho- makes you choose to be a trader or a player. I don't think it does that at all. I just really don't think it has an impact. Like maybe it impacts Pobble Trader, right? So like one person is impacted and like some of the traders that like constantly have their cards up and the bots are, are impacted. But it's definitely just, it's just not going to get, it, it just isn't going to accomplish the goals that are intended for it. I, I'm not saying you're wrong. Like, yes, yeah, some people will not do it, but then you're also going to have someone that accidentally list their cards that's in a lineup and they're going to be like, oh my God, my card was in a lineup. I now forfeited yada, 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 negative sentiment. And it's going to be negative. Um, so it, it just, I just don't think it's going to have an impact that, people are thinking it's going to have the and like another thing is like all right like joshua kimmick byron played like six straight straight game weeks because they had midweeks and they they played on the weekends and like that six straight game weeks there will just be no kimmicks on on the market which it like and someone's going to say like well that will raise the floor of them. well it doesn't really raise the floor of them it just there's going to be none on the market so like, if you want to go buy a kimmick because like let's say you're out there trying to buy a kimmick you then got to start offering all 200 managers that have a Kimmick to try to find someone that wants to sell a Kimmick because you don't know who wants to sell a Kimmick because none of them have them listed because he's played by 100% of the owners that have them. So it, I just don't think that there's going to be a ton of impact. Like, how many cards do you have for sale right now, Laird? I posted a bunch today. I don't know, 20? Like, Yeah, no, I'm curious. Like, how many cards do you have listed right now? Let me, let me see. Uh, five. All right. So you have five cards listed. Um, of those five cards, like you want to play your Rudy, you're just going to pull him down, play him, and then list him again after he plays. Yeah, I'll never play him. Shout out, Tuggy. The, I think the problem, not the problem, but I think the, I think it would have been better had they just made it, made the rule that if, a card is bought from a lineup, it kills the lineup. Like the well, prohibiting you from listing, I think, is not quite what we all want. Like, I, I think we would have yeah. understood, like, hey, you can sell your cards at any moment. Correct. But if it's pulled out of a lineup, it kills the lineup. And we'd be like, all right, that's a decent rule. But the fact that you can't even list is disappointing. Yeah. It's just, it's pretty. It's pretty stupid all around, honestly, to me. Like, I have I have one card listed. And, like, he doesn't play in the midweek, so I'll just leave him listed. If he played on the midweek and I was playing him, I'd just pull him down, put him back up on Friday. Or, like, as soon as the lineup was dead. Because once the lineup's dead and you can't win a card anyways, you can put the card up. 
So, like, I, I just don't think there's going to be tons of. Uh, so Haber said, hear him out. List or play adds a new dy dynamic. What if you're in second and you can buy a card in first place lineup with the ETH plus prize? It could be worth the loss of the card. No one's going to list a card if they're in first place. Well, the, not live. Unless the they, card, if, if they do, they're going to list it at some obnoxious price that it doesn't make sense for you to do. The card can't be listed. That's the point. Yeah, can. You cannot. As soon as the card is listed, the lineup is dead. Yeah, so they're not going to list. Okay, so they're not going to list the card. So like, I it is, there's no like, there's no dynamic. Like the, point, the dynamic is making an offer on the card. Yeah, and hoping like, they accept it. Like so, so literally, there's no dynamic. There's no. So uh, Haber, I will say the card cannot be listed and be in a lineup. Like it's, people it's literally also made this comment, and I think it's pretty true. The actual like breakdown of this stuff was like clear as mud, and you couldn't understand it anyways, and it was just not straightforward. Honestly, I've I've taken a total 180 on this. I think the lack of detail in many of these so rare announcements is purely for content purposes for all of us, and I thank them for that. Well, that's valid because I it just doesn't there just nothing's clear. But yeah, like so like all right, so this scenario that Haver's talking about, this scenario will not happen like ever. So it's just like there's no dynamic, there's no change. It, it's not that it I mean, that scenario will not happen. What will happen is there could be people who are in second, somebody in second, it makes an offer on a card yeah. of somebody in first. And if they accept that offer, then the lineup is canceled. Yeah, but like, someone's going to do it by accident and they're going to lose their mind. Sure. Yeah. And it's, it's going to be another negative sentiment by the situation. Um, like, it's just... It's, it's just never going to happen because there's no situation in which first is going to give up their reward for second and second is going to pay it because it just, there's no situation where it makes sense. I, I completely disagree with you that it will never happen. Okay. It will happen. Because <laughs> it will be point. Yes. There are hundreds like, of thousands of users on this platform and it takes one to do right. that. Someone's going to do it. They're going to lose their shit because it, they didn't mean to do it. And it's going to be just so stupid. But we'll be there to congratulate them on it. Like, people show. are going to do it. But, like, the issue is, right, all right, so, like, let's say I'm in second. Let's say I'm in All-Star Rare Pro second place. And the difference between first and second is, like, two ETH. So, like, first place is getting three ETH. Second place is getting one ETH. So I'm going to offer you two ETH for a card. The issue is the person first isn't going to do it because the person first is going from three ETH to zero ETH. So it makes no sense for them to do it. So Sean, it just is like... Sean, we're not talking about sense here. We're, we're talking about so rare. Yeah. I mean, uh, so, yeah. it just doesn't on, where, do um, My issue with List for Play was that it took... We have a, ma a major issue on so rare, which we've talked about many times. We're not going to go into that. But it's the late swap slash sub slash whatever that they have said we're going to move towards subs in the future so why are we spending developmental time and design time and all of that on the list or play feature the probably took hundreds of hours of manpower usage to come up with that idea design it develop it implement it like why is that resource Pool being used on that instead of something that is actually a major issue within the, the solar platform. So basically what they did here is they spent a lot of resources on something that provides no value to anyone realistically and doesn't have a positive or negative impact on the game at all that nobody was asking for. Instead of spending that time and that resource pool on something that a lot of people are discussing as an issue, a lot of people have discussed as an issue for years, and they could actually be working towards that instead. So like that's more of my issue. It's just a, a resource um, misplacement. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's entirely possible that different people are working on this. So I'm not going to say they're like taking away from one sure. to, to work on the other. I don't know how all of that sure. works. But Metal Gear said they never said they're going to move towards subs. They definitely said they're going to move towards like late swap type of option. I don't think they ever publicly said anything like well, that. Well, Zura tweeted about it that one time. I mean, just say, just say that again. Like, 
Yes. Yeah, but, but that's Zora tweeted once that they were looking. They, I believe he said they were looking at solutions for. I think he said that they were planning to move towards that in his tw in his Twitter. Eventually. Planning on moving, I, I don't think was ever part of it, but I don't know. But no, there's never been that's like an official. But that, I mean, that goes back to the whole week. That just circles back all around and comes full circle with the whole communication and lack thereof, right? We don't know what they're they're working on or planning to come up with. Um, and then there, and I'm not saying that we should know everything because we shouldn't like the, the community doesn't need to know every in and out of what they're working on, what they're thinking about, um, coming, coming up with, uh, Bellisterius just said they've been misplacing resources ever since, uh, they joined and re no companies, no companies. Re here. Well, I want to point this out from germ that if you're on a podium and you get an offer, and you counter that offer, that will also cancel your lineup because that's considered like listing. I it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a dumpster fire. Yeah. Like, like Bastin was saying, if you scroll past all the warning messages, that's on you. This is all on you or on whoever. Yeah. Metal Gear said the only reasonable sub swap option can appear after they introduce SO7, SO8, SO11. Don't agree with that at all. There's a, there's a very clear way to, to come up with late swaps and stuff. I mean, it's not clear. Like there's definitely like, you have to think about what you want to do, but like they don't need that have SO7, SO8, SO11 type option. I don't think subs subs will happen. Subs doesn't seem. Mike Bassin said that uh, Zura has had to retract plenty of tweets about gameplay changes, but typically he has to retract them because those are what is going to be implemented or being worked on um, per se. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like if Laird came in here and told you what we're working on at server data and then had to retract it, like that doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It just means that they didn't want you to know about it at that time. Like it's probably being discussed. If Laird brings it up, same way with Zero, right? If it, if, it's, if Laird comes in and Laird's like, hey, we're working on this. If Laird tweets out, hey, at server data, we're working on this great feature. And then he's like, hey, sorry, I had to delete that, that comment. They're probably discussing that feature and deciding whether or not that feature makes sense or can be implemented. Um, and so, like, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily definitely going to happen, but it's definitely something that's being discussed internally and, and being at least gone through. It's okay. Haber just complimented Zura's wife and said Zura's wife is absolutely stunning hmm. and he is winning at life. So, congrats to Zura on that. I've never seen Noted, it. Yeah. Um, apparently, Haber is out there. Cyber stalking, uh, Zura, but hmm. uh, I can't say I am familiar. Metal Gear says everyone wonders what exactly Zura is doing there, so he's not really a reliable source. Uh, I'd actually disagree. I'd say he's probably the most reliable source because he just seems to like post stuff, then has to to retract it. So he's clearly giving out information that they don't want to get out there. So I would actually say he gives out the most information. Um, Oh, it's Haber met him in real life. Yeah. So, sure, sure. It was in uh, France, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. They football together. I'm just updating our background here because we're not actually talking about whatever I thought we were going to talk I, about. I was just sitting here. I'm like, wait, was that X'd out the whole time or did that just happen? I just, just, I just did it. Um, well, Mike's saying, yeah, Clement says it on office, well, not office hours, but in the French streams anyway. Well, yeah, th but that's, that's my favorite part when I say something and I'm like, eh, I'm not going to say it. And then Maxime just says it. And then I'm like, oh, all right. Well, yeah, that's, gonna... that's the point. Like, if something does come out, typically it's being discussed at some point. Like it obviously, SoRare Data is more open with their communication on stuff like that and doesn't mind discussing, whereas SoRare is less open and does not want to talk about it. But just because it comes out and then gets retracted doesn't mean it's not credible. It means it's very credible, just whether or not they're actually going to implement and do something. Um, Haber said that I do not leave the house, so I'm skeptical when someone else does. I mean, I just, it's more so, Haber, I just know that leaving the house is never a positive in life. Whenever you have the option of leaving the house or not leaving the house, not leaving the house always is the best option. It's like, Laird, do you remember, do you remember like the saying growing up? Uh, you're old, so I'm sure people told you this, but like, Nothing happen. Nothing that happens after like midnight is is good or something. I have heard that. You could like translate the same thing here. Nothing that involves leaving the house is ever good. Just always better to be on your computer and in your house. I mean, I'm a I'm a house sleeper, so 
Yeah, you you get away from the computer a lot, which is unfortunate for you. Josh said PSU fans one left the house. That's probably why he's no longer here. He probably died because he left the house. <laughs> I mean, I don't have another. There's no other explanation. No other explanation. He just disappeared because he left the house, and that was a bad decision that he made. Life is all about decisions, and leaving yeah. the house apparently is like a really. I mean, I definitely. I mean, leaving the house is never a good idea. Like, anytime you look at, like, oh, I can leave the house or not leave the house, when is leaving the house ever, like, the top option? Blue tomatoes that is true. Like the, no, Tommy know. brings it up really well. Every time that I leave the house, I get I get the Rona. It's very true. The last few times I've left the house for a significant time frame, I got coronavirus. Valid. Very valid, Tuggy. I mean, he's not wrong. No, no, he's not. Like, I, I definitely, and that has nothing to do with the fact that I have, uh, I have a bad, uh, what you might call it? I forget what it's called. Immune system? Yeah, it's, none of it's because I have a bad immune system because I don't leave the house. I actually have a pretty good immune system typically, but I just like. Do you think I'm going to try to get us back on some sort of topic here? Okay. Although this is a good one. <laughs> Good place to saying that you actually get COVID so that you can stay home. So, so true story. So I've gotten Corona three times now and all three times result in me just having to sit around and watch TV all week. Yeah. Your life is exactly the same. My wife didn't have, yeah, but, it, but no, it was different because in these situations, my wife didn't be like, Hey, do you want to go to this thing that you don't want to go to? She just didn't even ask because I couldn't yeah. do that. Corona. <laughs> she was like, do you want to go outside? And that question. Okay, so I feel bad about this. I feel bad about this, but it happened. Like, so my niece got baptized like last time I got coronavirus. So like attempt number three of getting coronavirus. And I just couldn't go. Like I wanted to be there because obviously it was my niece getting baptized and I wanted to be there for my wife and the family. But like at the same time, like I got coronavirus. I just couldn't go. It's just like there's no discussion. So like we the the time before I got it, there was a we keep joking. So every time my wife's family makes plans, I've come down with coronavirus. Each time, like ever. So like the last time I got it was Christmas. So like literally we had to cancel our entire Christmas plans because I got coronavirus. Then the next time was my niece's baptism because I got coronavirus. I was unavailable to go. The time before that I got coronavirus was my niece was just born and we were going down to, to meet my niece and spend time with family and I got coronavirus. <laughs> so I told I told my sister-in-law, I'm like, you guys need to just like stop planning things because I my body just like hears it and it just like, yeah, you're gonna get coronavirus now to avoid it. I think it's probably because you leave the house like a week before you're supposed I to go do. on these things and you just like lick doorknobs and you're like, No, so so the, 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 out of this. so the first one, yes. The first one I went to the MLB All-Star game, and I'm pretty sure Andy Black gave me coronavirus because it was all up in my grill per use as he does third time i got coronavirus i was in nashville right before i got coronavirus so those two definitely the second time in the middle was in december where i hadn't left the house in four months and i got coronavirus so i mean i'm pretty sure my wife gave it to me because it's the only thing that makes sense like she's at school where like everyone has coronavirus and it's just like it's the only thing that makes sense but yeah we have yeah. we have a we have a trip planned this summer um, a family trip this plan this summer. I'm like, I'm just going to get coronavirus. It's just inevitable at this point. This feels like there's no way I don't get it. I'm looking forward to this trip because literally we're going to a the Outer Banks and I'm just going to sit at a pool all week and have a golf cart. I'm just going to ride around in a golf cart all week. But I'm going to totally get coronavirus. Yeah, like, you will. Go. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to bring us back to something because I was just looking at it and I wanted to bring this up to you. Okay. Do you think this automatically makes people more aggressive in posting their cards for floor prices when like they know that it's going to be the first one that pops up. Yeah. That's why I think that this is kind of incentivizing a rush to the floor. Right. So the other question is, what do you think about somebody who is new to this game and goes to the secondary market to buy cards and they're like, Oh yeah, let me see who the most popular players are and gift Orban is more popular than Kylian Mbappe and Aiden Morris is more popular than Erling Haaland. What does yeah, that say? About our game? How do they like calculate the popular players thing? I don't know, but I'm just not sure it's, I don't, I don't know if it's working. 
I mean, I don't, I don't understand how it's calculated. So like, I can't really comment to you. I can't think of how it's populated that allows it to look like this. I'll put it that way. Yeah. I, I mean, no idea. ZM star. I do not know where we're going in outer banks. I, I like don't, if it's my, if it's my family that's going on a trip or like my wife and I, I plan it and do all the planning. If it's her family, I just completely stay out of it because I don't want to have any input on the, the situation. Hmm. The Caleb Wiley, that's, I mean, like, I don't know. I mean, I don't really know how they're coming up with this stuff. It's very strange. What's funny is so like Caleb Wiley was like popping off for two weeks earlier in the year and people were paying an absolutely idiotic amount for him. Like, I don't even care what the amount was. And I sat there and I'm like, I'm like, if you have Caleb Wiley in your gallery and he is not for sale today, you are out of your mind because there's just no way he's ever going to be a good card. Like I football coops was, was asked. He had, he had this card. He's like, I'm so happy. I have a Caleb Wiley card. I'm like, if that card is not out of your gallery in like two hours, you are doing things wrong. Um, and yeah, Tecker's also like, I was like, you guys are nuts if you own this card. Like he's just a, he is literally one of those cards. Like Wiley is literally a card. There's no chance of success for him. Like none. What do you mean? He had an 87. Oh my God. Are we going to walk into our topic for today? We are. We're going to walk into our topic on volatile players. Caleb Wiley is really not a volatile player. He just kind of sucks. And then you'll get a random 60 or 70 when he gets a decisive, which makes him a valid cat mode play. Sure, it wasn't Pentas. Sure, it was. They're all. Like, he literally just has no chance of success because he's just never going to have an AA that makes sense in the role that he's in for Atlanta. Like, He's just his his AA is two point three. I was just gonna make a joke about net, but I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna keep it to myself. Yeah, like I mean, yeah, but but again, again, right? Like Wiley, like let's say this week we can actually would have been a good weekend to use him when they played Chicago. Um, he's still better than Havertz, is he? I'm not even sure if he is. I gotta check Havertz. So let's let's check out our boy. Uh, Havertz has a two point five AA. What was what was Wiley's? Uh, Wiley's L40 is 4.0. 4.0, all right. But 0.6 in the L15. Havertz L40 is 4.5. Havertz is actually probably a better play than Caleb Wiley. Yeah. It, it's, it's, uh, John, John Andrews says Kyleb Wiley, which is, which is pretty good. Um, that is pretty good. Yeah. So I, uh, I definitely think that um, I wouldn't want that card in my gallery. Who is the worst? And what was what was the that Chicago Fire? Oh, oh four. Who was a listed as a defender and played out and out striker, and the dude's like AA was just his AA is actually less than less than one. Who is it? Uh, Chinoso oh four. He's now with Montreal. But he was on Chicago. He's he has a, his card was a defender card. I just spell his name. I don't even know who you're talking his, about. His AA guess his AA before you get there. Guess his AA all time. He has seventy five appearances. Guess what? 04's AA is as a defender card. One. Not even. Go go way lower, Larry. Was oh, it negative? Oh, go way lower. Oh, I don't know. Oh, minus five. In, in like 75 games, 04's AA is minus 9.6. How does that happen? Because he's a defender who played out and out striker for Chicago. But still. Just just type in, yeah, it's it's that one. His, his name changed. Uh Chinoso. Yeah. He now has forward cards or his list as a forward, but he was a, he was a defender for I, most of his cards, I think, are defenders. Oh, these are the forward. Yeah. There we go. No, most of his cards are defenders. It's pretty bad. We're, that is the worst card on the platform. It is hard for me to envision that there is a worse card on the platform. Like, his starter A is probably worse than his bench A because he plays more during the game. Like, you'd rather have him, like, if you play him in the lineup, you'd rather have him just, like, get injured immediately. That is wild. I didn't yeah. even know this guy existed. Yeah, I did. 
literally the worst, worst card on the platform. There is no card that is worse than that because there is absolutely no way that that card can be good. Wow. No, there's literally zero. When I make fun of Kai Hobbard, he's got nothing on this card. This card is the worst card on the platform by a country mile. Like, I don't even know, like, how do people have this card? Like, how do you go and buy this card? So, actually, his AA in starts is minus 17.4. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. he plays longer. His AA is better when he literally doesn't play as much. You want you want him to sub on, play zero minutes. You want him to start, like, and immediately tear his ACL in the game. You just get the stomach flu. No, but like I our, brought up the guy that, that I did this show on. Nuno Tavares. Yeah, Nuno Tavares. Well, all right, so here's here's a question with 04, Laird. All right. How are people buying 04? <laughs> <laughs> people are literally paying 0.02E for 04. Like, like it's he's been selling. Like, how what what makes you buy that card? It's a good question. Like, people have bought that card. If you are, if anyone is out there who has actually paid funds for his defender card, could you please let us know why? Sean, eight sold yesterday for limiteds. Yeah, like why? Like, who is buying this? Huh. Yeah, no, no, I will give Tuggy credit. Tuggy, I do not even think you could even consider being that bad. I like this. ZM starts, I think, 04 is the MLS referral card. Yeah, which is fine. That's fine if he's a referral card. But, like, people are literally paying for him. Like, I mean, what yeah. is 2 e What is that, like, four bucks? Uh, that sounds about right. Yep. Yeah, but Germ, did you actually go out and pay for that card? Hmm. Oh, actually, you know what, Sober Holland? That is valid. He, There you go. You found the answer because he's like locked in if he starts. like. But yeah, hmm. like people are paying four bucks for this. Yeah, that's wild. That's like McDonald's. Half a McDonald's for a day. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Nuno Tavares is the one that popped up to me when we were thinking of this topic because I have one. I won it. And I remember when I won it, I was like, oh, he can score. It. Do I still have it? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Nobody's Nobody wants to buy it. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, he's... I don't know. Yeah. I think it was a tier, five, tier four, maybe. Uh, Nuno Mendes has got to be pretty her terrible, too. So Nuno Mendes and... Hakimi are both pretty bad. Yeah, Hakimi though has a lot more offensive upside though than Mendez from what I've seen. No, I'm not, Mendes I'm not doubting the games recently. Yeah, I'm not doubting Mendes upside at all. It's more just score range, and it's absurdly high with both of them. Yeah, like Hakimi, Hakimi has a lot of really bad games. So Ron Romero just said maybe a new competition coming where worst team got a reward. I am all for a low ball competition. For those unaware, it's called low ball. That's typically like the name of how it would be. Or in other areas, it would be called shit chillers, which just wouldn't be used. But it's basically you have to have five guys that play and worst five man lineup like would win. That is actually how Laird got his Fred Emmings card. He put out the worst five man lineup in a competition and, and Fred Emmings pulled through. Yeah, I'm actually pretty yeah, excited. My rare for lineup that week. Yeah, Nuno Mendes has some pretty good outcome lately. I mean, he, I, yeah. I still wouldn't want his card, but still, I'm pretty impressed with with how he's sort of transpired later in the season. Because early in the he, season, he's yeah, been better than spikes. Hakimi. Yeah, he is. He's been better than Hakimi. He's, early in the season, he hasn't had those spikes, right? Like before the recent stretch of games, like he didn't really have those 190-point spikes. Um but yeah, like I'm all for like a. Sh it would be a really fun competition. It would be a comp it would be a good competition if you have a competition where, um, and it could be easily done by Sarah too. Like worst lineup wins. If your guy doesn't play, you get a hundred. Yeah. Oh, it's an easy game. Yeah, it's an easy game mode for them to create, and it would be a fun game mode. And it gives everyone can compete, right? Like everyone can compete because those cards are really um, not. 
worth like most people don't have them. But like, yeah, you go out there and you buy a four and you just got to smash her. All mm-hmm. of a sudden, a four has some value in that competition. But I'm all for it. I think it would be a good way to give uh, smaller galleries a chance to compete because you you could have tons of cards if you're just not that great that could compete in that competition. Do you reward those types of cards? You know, you have to reward Mbappe all types of cards but like price if you if you reward good cards in that situation too those guys will be priced differently so they would be different level of reward so like an 04 could be like a tier two because he's priced a bit right. higher because right. he's that bad right it's just, i don't think that's the game we really want to play no but but no i think that's fine i think that's okay i think that gives people a chance to compete with with a lot smaller gallery types but they're but they're not competing because now 04 is too expensive. And I don't think he gets that expensive. I don't think it's that high. Maybe. I think if you make a game where that card is valuable, it's your game is broken. Well, so you don't like you don't like Schitchler's. Gotcha. I love the game itself, but I like not I like using cards that really aren't valuable. Like they're yeah. ma- that's artificially making a card that shouldn't be valuable valuable. Yeah, I don't know. It's the biggest I, gripe people have with so rare NBA because these I mean, guys that really aren't good now are really valuable because they're important. Oh, the the biggest most important range on on NBA is guys that are just like ten to twenty point players that like get spiked up if people are injured. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Like literally, like just do it for if they did it for so rare coins, we'd all play and we'd be really happy about it. Yeah, but, that could be cool. If, if they make, uh, if it, if they make it like so coins and or sorry silver coins and the silver coins are, are valuable like that's yeah that that's totally a reasonable competition that could be fun for people but again you, know, you still have the same you still have the same issue if if getting silver coins is very valuable and you um yeah like then 04 goes up in value again so it's like I, you're sort of creating the same situation that you just previously talked about not wanting to create. Yeah, I'm just not sure. I mean, I know that they want so rare coins to be really something that people go after, but I don't see people buying cards just to win so rare coins. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, it depends how good they are. If, if so rare coins are incredibly valuable to get, you could see people go out there and buy cards like that. Yeah. Um, Josh XL said, what about a hit to score game mode? I think so rare mega has that. They do, but it's a one. It's a one player. I think it was. It was yeah. used to be called like Sower Dice or whatever, and they had one player that was like to hit it. I actually like that, and I actually like the idea of having a floating target where it just yeah. moves, moves in different different ideas. And I think that's a really good I- idea. Um, and and again, like that's that's a great special competition they could have, Josh. Where like each week they have a different a different uh, a different cap whatever the cap is that week so like you call it one I, I i wouldn't so this is what i would do josh i don't know if i would do it no no you could do it like that you could target to hit a certain score point i think that works no they have one it's 250 get over it that's the target wow. <laughs> more yeah, than 250 like floating where the range is, is different and stuff and, yeah, and no, you don't yeah. have a limit and you can play whoever you want mm-hmm. yeah uh, we have anything else that's completely unrelated to our topic today? It took no. us 56 minutes to get to our topic, and then we blew it off in about one minute. So. I mean, to be fair, you said last night you didn't have a topic, and you didn't really care. No, I had a topic. I said that, and then I had a topic. Yeah. and I. What's funny is I'm like, oh, maybe we'll talk about this next week. We're not going to talk about this next week. Nope. No, no we'll, have, we'll have a cool topic next week, maybe. Sure. Guys, it just all depends when Laird puts in his brain to think about a topic. The issue is usually it's like Sunday night at like 10 p.m., and he's got nothing. And I'm just like, I don't care. Just tell me what we're talking about because I'm pretty open. True story. True story. Yep. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. If you could please hit the like button on the video. We've got a lot more current viewers than likes. So if you could just take that one second to like the video, always appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow, maybe, or Wednesday with Maxine for office hours. We'll see. And then next week, there's going to be a bit of a shuffle. And then the week after that, maybe another shuffle. We'll see. Stay tuned. But uh, yeah, thank you everyone for joining us. And um, talk to you later.